What is up everybody, Kika06 back here with another test video of the Ryzen 7 8700G. This time we've got Marvel Rivals as the game we are going to be testing now. Um, as always, the links and the specs of the test rig that I'm doing all this testing on will be down below as well as my personal Discord link in case you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, anything. Feel free to hop in and let me know. If there's any other games you want to see, feel free to post them below in the comments. I plan on keeping this computer for a while. So as long as it's cheap or free, there's a real good chance I'm going to be uh, all upload a video testing whatever game you want. But anyways, we are doing Marvel Rivals right now, and we are doing low, medium, and high settings, all of which will have FSR on to help with those frames. But regardless of low, medium, and high, I really noticed, and this is kind of spoilers, really noticed that it pretty much stayed between 50 and 60 FPS the entire time. The 1% lows were generally between 20 and 30. As you can see on the screen in the top left where it has all the information, um, it, it pretty much stayed pretty consistent all the way through. Um, and I will say that once I do change the graphical setting, once I go from low to medium, it does reset that 1% and 0.1% lows, so it go it drops down to like four or five. So that's a lie. You just got to give it about 20, 25 seconds to catch up, and then you'll see that it's right back up between 20 and 30. FPS, which to me it felt very clean and it was very fluid. There was not really any issues with this game. I did not expect any and I was not disappointed. Uh, if I was good at this game, I'd play it more, but I suck at games. That's why I make YouTube videos. One more thing before I go is if you want any more uh, information about uh, my build or any information about the different settings and the configurations for the APU and uh, all the different software I use. I put an informational video at the back half of this video. If you don't care about it, so be it. But it just goes through all the things that I changed and all of the, uh, basically all the changes I did in the BIOS and Ryzen Master and AMD Adrenaline. If you care, great. If you don't, that's great too. Thank you guys so much for coming by the video. Again, if you need anything, find me in Discord or find me in the chat. So hope you guys have a good one. Enjoy the rest of the video. Hey, good. 
it not. Moonlight placed an arc. The final ten seconds! What is up, guys? If you made it this far, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos. I hope you found them helpful. Up to over the past couple days, I have tested about 20 different games. And this is kind of the part where I just want to go over with you guys um, my settings and maybe go over an issue or two that I had. Uh, first off, this right here is called FPS Monitor. I got it off of Steam. I believe it was a couple bucks, but this is where I got all the information that was in, I think, all but one of the videos. And I think CS Counter-Strike 2, I think, did not take this. I don't remember. One of them didn't like it and it wouldn't work. But FPS Monitor on Steam, I think it was a couple bucks, but that is exactly what I used. As for this, this is the Adrenaline. This is the um, AMD Adrenaline app that you will need if you are going to get the CPU or any of the G series from Ryzen. So HyperRX is, is well known for it being the best for FPS. It has the Super Res that was on, Fluid Motion Frames 2 that was on, Anti-Lag and Boost. All of these were on. Uh, you can go to quality, and I think it's pretty comparable, but all based on my research, uh, Hyper RX is definitely the one that you want to go to um, for performance, and you can get all these. You can have your own overlay. You can set it up here. I just didn't do that because I like the way the other one was formatted a little bit better. Um, here's the system right now. I have 32 gig of RAM installed. There's the Ryzen 7 8700G as advertised. So right now it says there's only 24 gig of RAM and I will tell you why right now. I went into the BIOS and changed the UMA frame buffer size to eight gig, which means, if, which means that I took eight gig of the physical RAM and turned it into VRAM for the APU um, so it would have more power. Um, I, with with 32 gig that gave us plenty of room since most of the games today did not even get over 20 gig usage of ram so that gave us some extra fps um so that's why i did it i allocated eight gig of ram and that's why right there uh, i had a question in my chat before that was asking me what version i was using of windows so there it is windows 11 home there's the version in the os build so the next thing that I wanted to show you was AMD Ryzen Master. This is where I go for basically basically the overclocking, really. So I set it on game mode, turned on Precision Boost Overdrive. On top of that, I came down to SOC voltage. So the GPU SOC voltage was, uh, I set it to 1.275, and I will tell you exactly why. Once I got into the more demanding games like Halo and Warzone and Ark, I, the computer started just resetting on me, and it would just, it would just reset and go right back to the login screen. So I did a little bit of research on Reddit and YouTube, and I found one guy that said he had those same exact issues and he said that it was a voltage problem. So he raised it up to 1.275 volts and it worked uh, flawlessly and it was stable and he never had an issue again. I think if I remember right, it was on like 1.15 or 1.175, something like that. So he didn't raise it a crazy amount, but over the past seven, I believe, the past seven uh, games that I tested, zero issues and no issues, no uh, no criticals in the event viewer either. Uh, a couple other things in the BIOS, like I said, I allocated that VRAM. Um, I made sure that the resize bar was enabled. I set the F clock to 2500 and the U clock was at 3000 because I used 6000 megahertz RAM. And XMP was on for this, by the way, in case you were curious. 
Um, let's see what else I have for you guys before we go out. So that uh, FPS monitor app that I use, it showed the 1% and 0.1% lows. And I just want you to know that the first 20 to 30 seconds after I change to a different um, graphical setting, it kind of resets that. So the first 20 to 30 seconds are not trustworthy. So if, if I switch over and you see, oh, it's only five... Uh, it's five FPS for a 1% low for 25 seconds. That's awful. It was not that bad, which is why it went from five. In most cases, it went from that five FPS or two FPS all the way up to 30 or 40. Uh, it just had to reset and it basically has to play catch up. Uh, one other thing I wanted you guys to understand, um, all of this testing was done on a 27-inch Asus Tough curved 1080p 165 hertz monitor. The frames were um, basically the frames were uncapped if it was possible and if possible every single one of these games was done in full screen exclusive um and the last thing i wanted you guys to know is that all of the recording and all of the fps monitoring software was done on the computer while playing the game so i did go back and i played five to ten of the games over again just to uh, see the difference in the FPS without having to run OBS and FPS monitor. And it came down to about a 5 to 13 FPS differential when the OBS and FPS were FPS monitor were turned off. When, when the game was the only thing running, there was an increase of about 5 to 13 FPS on average. And I know that's kind of a very precise number, and that's just exactly what it was so that is going to be it for me if you have any other questions or if you want to see any other games please feel free put them in the comments below and i will get to them i plan on keeping this computer for a while i hope you guys have a great rest of your night don't be safe don't do anything stupid and i will catch you guys on the next video